Chapter 7. Why I Don't Ride the Bus. I think that's a good question for our chapter title, and it's a question all on its own. Why I Don't Ride the Bus. You could make some predictions, though, why you think she doesn't ride the bus. Um, knowing her um, need for rules, um, prime numbers. I don't know how prime numbers would have anything to do with a bus, but you never know. Um, rules. I don't know. Maybe it's the rules on the bus. I used to ride bus number seven to school. Bus number seven made 14 stops, which was good because 14 is a multiple of seven. Okay, I could be wrong. It could totally be about numbers. I was the only person at my bus stop, the second stop on the route. At the next 12 stops, every kid would walk down the aisle looking for a seat and pass by the empty space next to me. Marty Mayhew, who lives at the prime number homonym address of 11 Band Lane, would flick a spitball at me as she went by. I would stare straight ahead and let it bounce off my face onto the bus floor. Then Wilson Antonelli would come along and say, pick it up retard, you're littering. At each stop, our driver, whose name was Shirley Ringwood, would look back at us backward in her big glaring mirror and wait until everyone was sitting down. Then she would close the door, put bus number seven in gear and start driving again. And I would watch out my window to see who was following the rules of the road. There's that rule thing. There are lots of rules for drivers and they're listed clearly in the New York State Driver's Manual, but many drivers don't follow them. Hey, I would shout, that man didn't use his directional before he turned the corner. Miss Ringwood, did you see that? He broke the law. Sometimes Mrs. Ringwood would answer me. Sometimes she just kept her eyes on the road ahead. It depended on how close to her I was sitting. Rainy days were difficult. The rule is that if your windshield wipers are on, then your headlights must be on too. Miss Ringwood, Miss Ringwood, I just saw three cars with their wipers on and their headlights off. I would cry. Marnie would start to giggle and Wilson would lean over his seat and hold out a cell phone and say, why don't you report that to the police, retard? They're supposed to follow the rules. They aren't following the rules. One day, I sat down in the first row of seats so I could watch Mrs. Ringwood's driving. Oh, that makes me nervous. Why'd the author say that? Do you think he's trying to prepare us that something's coming up? What is that called again? Foreshadowing. She slowed bus number seven as we approached the intersection of Sandy Road and Route 9W. Then we rolled slowly by the stop sign. Mrs. Ringwood! You didn't come to a complete stop! I shouted. <coughs> Miss Ringwood, that's against the law. It says in the manual that you must come to a complete stop. A complete stop! Mrs. Ringwood turned on Route 9W. Let it go, Rose. Miss Ringwood, are your headlights on? A spitball hit me in the back of the neck. Hey, that driver wasn't wearing his seatbelt. Did you see that, Mrs. Ringwood? We reached School Lane. Ahead was Hatford Elementary. Mrs. Ringwood turned the wheel to the right and we started to swing into our bus lane. Stop, I shouted. Miss Ringwood, stop right now. Mrs. Ringwood slammed on the brakes. What's the matter? She cried. She stood up to look out her window. Behind me, all the kids crowded to the other windows to see what had happened. Traffic came to a halt. You didn't use your, dire your directional, I said. That's against the rules. Miss Ringwood sat down again. She leaned her forehead on the steering wheel. And she turned around and said to me, are you freaking kidding me? After she parked bus number seven, she went into Hatford Elementary and spoke with the principal. That's why I don't ride the bus anymore.